questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. And welcome to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeff Malinoff. With me once again is Mark Souza. We are going to be talking about fantasy football, of course, our studs and duds, who broke out, who did not so break out, and uh, what to expect for the next upcoming weeks. So um, who are, who would you say was a big stud? Uh, I think the obvious one is Isaiah Crowell. What do you think? Isaiah Crowell. Huge performance, uh, absolutely. He's one of the most notable players, especially because there are other players who performed really well, but he might have been the one name that's not like maybe a household name or a top player at his position that really, really rewarded fantasy owners who put their faith in him and started him this week. Yeah, definitely. Um, I understand the people that benched him because he was not getting a lot of the carries. It was mainly uh, Powell that was getting most of the carries. And he really showed up to this game against the Broncos with over 200, almost 220 yards rushing. I mean, not many players go rush for over 200 yards in a season. So, in one game at least. Yeah, and he still was out-touched by Powell, but he obviously made the most of his carries. So, you know, 220 yards kind of speaks for itself. He had a great game. James Conner, another good game for him, but this might have been his best game yet as a Steeler. What did you think of his performance? Stellar, definitely, to say the least. I think it gives the Steelers questions on when Bell comes back or who to start. But I'd definitely put him on your fantasy team if he's on waivers. Uh, Who's that, Conner? Yeah. Oh, I mean, he's... He's been claimed a while back. But, I mean, some people probably still have him available in their on their teams and stuff um would you trade for him i wouldn't uh no i mean i would trade him rather than trade for him because when bell comes back his value is going to be very um useless in my opinion but we will see another performer for running backs todd Gurley. another another big game for the rams running back as he led the rams basically in all fantasy numbers they didn't have a whole lot from from the passing game. Brandon Cooks left the game. Uh, Cooper Cup left the game. Both guys left the game with uh, concussion symptoms. Uh, Jared Goff didn't have a good game. The Rams got the win, but Gurley, he maintained his prowess as he reached the end zone three times. People who picked him high in their drafts. Yeah, it was definitely a good game for those who had having to start in the lineup. For those who had having to start in the lineup, that's a big smile on those people's faces, that's for sure. Saquon Barkley, another big game for the rookie running back as he puts up 28.9 fantasy points and half PPR scoring. A really solid game by the rookie. He just shows that he can do it all. He caught a touchdown pass from Odell Beckham, which was awesome to see. It looks like he also avoided major injury, which is nice. It looked like he had come up uh, a little bit gimpy on his touchdown run when he jumped into the end zone. He landed a little bit funny, but it looks like he avoided injury. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a scary landing. It looked like he, that, like those landings sometimes are like torn ACLs and stuff like that. So, uh, looked like he's fine. Probably be back by next week, but it was still a scary uh, couple of minutes there for any Giants fans or anyone on his fantasy team. Yeah, so let's talk about a couple duds for running backs this week since we just went through some some running back studs. Who's your running back dud for the week? Running back dud for the week. Um, That's a tough one. I have one. Who? Jay Ajayi. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he had a really poor game day. Eight carries for 29 yards. He had 1.9 fantasy points. Ouch. Uh, who else was up there in uh, 
You know, Philip Lindsay didn't have that good of a game either. Yeah, who who else is up there for disappointment? Um, I don't know. Marshawn Lynch and five points. For me, that's a huge disappointment. He didn't get that goal line touchdown where they threw an interception, where Derek Carr threw a pick in the end zone. How often... I, <sighs> I don't know. How, how can teams continue not to give Marsh, Marshawn Lynch the ball at the one-yard line is beyond me. Uh, if play action makes sense, but I don't think that play was even a play action, was it? Uh, it was. It was. It was a, oh, it a was. play action. Still didn't work. What about um, Devontae Freeman and his game back from injury five fantasy points? Not exactly what you wanted. Yeah, very disappointing to say the least. I mean, you want at least like 10 to 15 points from that guy and not even close to that. He it didn't look like it was much of an effort for him to do much. Absolutely. So yeah, Marshawn Lynch and Jay Jai are my two uh, duds. Devontae Freeman would be my third just because you would expect a higher point total, but I can get, I get it that the game was kind of out of hand for the Falcons. Uh, they were playing from behind. He was coming back from injury. But very disappointed in the Falcons' running back production. So Now you're disappointed for all running backs except for Crowell. Let's talk about quarterbacks. Who is your quarterback stud? Who is your quarterback dud? Quarterback stud would have to be C.J. Beathard. You had a lot of stock in him? Not a stop, but he should have played way better than that against no one forward. But he had twenty four and a half fantasy points. He beat his projection. But five, like three of like three or four of those turnovers caused by the 49ers were because of him. Agreed, but in terms of fantasy numbers, he wasn't. There was a lot of quarterbacks who finished below him, um, as he finished in the top ten. Did he really? It looked like he played terrible. He finished 10th at 24 and a half. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think he played a great NFL game, but fantasy game, he put up numbers. He had more numbers than Matt Ryan, Matt Stafford, Baker Mayfield, Cam Newton, Blake Bortles, Deshaun Watson, Jared Goff, Kirk Deshaun Cousins. Watson would probably be a dud to replace CJ then. I have a dud. So, let me guess, Blake Bortles? He no, he had a good he had a good fantasy game. Well, he had 430 yards correctly through five interceptions. So Marcus Mariota. I was, well, I was hesitant about playing Blake Bort by Blake Bortles as a W as a 430 yards, but definitely Marcus Mariota has been a dud. Four fantasy points for Marcus Mariota. That's it. 129 yards, no touchdowns. That's it. He had 10 yards on two carries. Wow. Um. That's and, bad. And he was coming off a 34-point fantasy game. So if you put stock in him, you were very, very disappointed. You're probably thinking like, oh, he's playing against the Bills. He can probably get 20 to 25 points for me. He puts up a four spot for you. So not not in, not in what you're looking for there. What about um, an, any other quarterback uh, stud and dud for us? Uh, quarterback? Yeah, quarterback stud and dud. Uh, stud, probably Ben Roethlisberger. Huge game. He had 27.6 fantasy points. Great game. He was at home. I think that was expected. Um, what about dud performance for quarterback? Dak Prescott. Yeah. Big dud. Big dud. What do you get, like 13 or something? Some, it was not. It's yeah. What you shouldn't get as a quarterback. 13.6. Do you see him improving on that? Oh, I got one. Joe Flacco. Yes. Dud. So let's talk about Dak for a second. Can I stop you? These are his first... No. These are his fine. first five games. Go for it. 8 points, 16 points, 10 points, 22 points, 13 points. I don't think he's good enough to be on a roster for fantasy right now. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, he's averaging like 13 or 14 points a game. Like, Th you can do that's better. That's pretty poor. Yeah. And he plays Jacksonville next week. That's going to be a tough one. Yeah, he's a bench player for sure. Is he even a bench player, or do you drop him considering you're not playing him next week? You're probably not playing him the week after that against Redskins. It's well, going to be tough. Whoever your main, main guy is, whoever the bye week happens, 
Yeah. You got to put them in. You got to put it some someone with quality. I'm going to give I'm going to give some love to a quarterback here that's had a tough first four games as one of my studs, Russell Wilson. He had a good game. Yeah, he did. 25.8. Didn't get the win, but he did do a good game overall. Uh definitely definitely a solid game from him. I know that he was a player that a lot of people had dropped. His performances are 26, 18, 19, 9, and 26. So he plays the Raiders this week. Russell Wilson, do you think he'll be a popular ad if he's been dropped in fantasy football? I don't think he's still a starter material for this season, to be honest. Would I, you? Would you? Do you like the matchup though against the Raiders next week? Is it home or away? Uh, that's a good question. Give me one second my friend and i will let you know it is a way it's on the baseball the diamond i don't have the winning it nope yeah but do you have him having a decent game against that nope, secondary i don't have that either okay uh my fantasy dud is ryan Tannehill. really Tannehill had nine fantasy points he started off the season relatively well but his For last at least. his last two games against New England and Cincinnati, he had zero and nine in his last two. That's rough. Yeah. After starting off really strong, he was a popular ad after the Raiders performance where he put up thirty two. But yeah, so let's move on to wide receivers. Give me your one stud and one dud for this weekend. Stud you know what? I'll go dud first. Calvin Ridley. Yeah, he's your guy. He is my guy, and he dudded. Well, I guess Julio Jones could be a dud also. How about this? Everyone but Sanu Jr. dud for the Falcons. Yeah, it wasn't a good game at all for that offense. We talked about Freeman and even Coleman uh, and those running backs. They didn't have great fantasy games. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Calvin Ridley, you you kind of mentioned it there. He had a lot of hype coming in. And, uh, you know, he had just come off of his last three games prior, 14 points, 41 points, and 20 points. He puts That's up, pretty good. Yeah, but he put up a four for 38 game. That gives him 5.8 points and a half PPR scoring. So it's definitely a step back for Ridley, but I think, I don't know. I know that we kind of disagreed on this, but I, I see more days like this for him just because he's not getting the time on the field that he needs. I think he's. I think he's still gonna be a main wide receiver, though a main go-to, especially in the red zone. Yeah, I mean, he definitely he's could. Get the problem is, is that he just he needs to be on the field. Like that's just. It doesn't matter if you score. Like for example, Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson had three catches this week for 128 yards and two touchdowns. It's hard to say that he's going to do that again. I mean, he will have a game like that again, maybe two games like that again. But without the volume, it's so hit or miss. And it's going to be hard living with those dud games, you know? Yeah, but I think he'll have more of those good games than duds, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. He he absolutely could. We'll see. The jury is definitely um, not out yet. There will be... Uh, players and teams that they'll have ups and downs. So you want to talk about um, a stud? Uh, Thielen. Thielen, yeah, man. What a guy. Like, what a player. He just keeps putting up so many points every week. Let's talk about it. He had another 100-yard game. Again. For the fifth week in a row. Fifth week in a row. These are his yardage totals. 102, 131, 105, 135, 116. He scored three times, three different games. His lowest game is 15 points. He's getting between 15 and 27 a game. That's pretty good for running for just a wide receiver. He's the number one fantasy wide receiver right now. I think he, I think because he's his go to, uh, that's Kirk Cousins go to receiver and you gotta and he loves throwing the ball to his go to receiver so he's gonna give the ball to Thielen quite often. 
A player who had a big game, Odell Beckham, 31 fantasy points. He led wide receivers this week. And he led wide receivers in touchdown passes. He did. So he gets a touchdown pass to his name. Uh, yeah, nice to see from him. Um, that was his first game. He also had his first touchdown reception in the season. He did. He got one of each. So it took not him a sure. very long time, five weeks for a guy like Odell Beckham, and yet he had that controversy You're talking about how Eli Manning might be the problem. Um, but overall, you got to look at like five five weeks without a touchdown. Can he do that? He can't afford to do that again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The the Giants they need to find more ways to get him the ball in situations like that. We saw him after the game talk about how he wants to run more routes behind the defenders and maybe have more play calls that uh, look to get him and the other receivers down the field. So it will be interesting to see how that dynamic goes forward. I'm not sure if uh, Eli will be offended at some of those comments, um, but it definitely sounded like he was throwing his quarterback under the bus a little bit. Yeah, and it kind of got under the skin of his of his teammates. But uh, we're going to take a little short break. We'll make it back. We'll talk about some other studs and duds as well as um, who we think will break out for next week. And we'll see you right after this. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. We've been talking about our studs and duds, and we're going to keep that rolling. Uh, we've talked about our running back studs and duds, our quarterback studs and duds, and our receiver studs and duds. Who do you have for tight end? Uh, let's finish wide receiver first. There's oh, a couple okay. more I'd like to talk about. So Antonio Brown really showed up with 27. Devontae Adams with 26. Really good games from them. DeAndre Hopkins, 19. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's some duds that are really standing out this season. Let's talk about one that might be the most maddening fantasy football player to have on your roster. His name is Amari Cooper. What about him? A 1.5. Oh, yeah, he's terrible. So let me tell you his last five games. 2.3. 18.6, 2.7, 24.8, He has two games over 100 yards. He has three games under 17 yards. What do you make of him as a fantasy football player? Dud. I, I don't know how else to put it. He's due. It looks like, I mean, if you follow the pattern, that he should have a big game this week. He should have, like, nine catches, 115 yards, and a touchdown against Seattle. Do you see that happening or do you see more another bad performance? Um I don't see him getting back into like a the swing of things. I think he's going to be a mediocre fantasy footballer for the rest of the season. I mean, it's it's tough at this The Raiders point. are going to be mediocre, he's going to be mediocre with them. How about uh Doug Baldwin one catch, one yard? Awesome. I mean, what history in the making? I don't think anyone has been that. Was that really one are yard? You, one yard? Are you concerned about him? Or, or I, I'm so. Oh, let me. Let me. He's uh, coming back from knee injury. Let me. Let me uh, just re re replicate. One yard after one catch. One catch. One yard. What, was he? Did he just take a? Was it just a screen? It must have been just a screen pass of some kind. Yeah. My God, man! I, one yard. One. I mean, one reception. How many targets? 
Uh, I'm not sure. Oh. Well, still, one catch. Lockett one... had a good game, and that uh, Moore guy had a, a good game for them out of nowhere. Um, yeah, so. Still shocked about the one yard. It's not good. It's hard to see. You don't hear that often. If you picked him, he's probably just sitting on your bench. You're thinking about dropping him. Would you That's drop like him? That's .01 points. Would you drop him? Yes. Outright. You just let him go. One receiving yard equals drop. What about Larry Fitzgerald? Four and a half points. He's on my bench. Are you, You're just holding him? It's Larry Fitzgerald. you got to hold on to that guy. Well, ba- yes, Baldwin he goes off at any moment. Baldwin's pretty good, too. I mean, that's that's why I was Fitzgerald's asked. way better, in my uh, opinion. I mean, maybe, but we'll see. So, one's yeah. One's a Hall of Famer, one's not. Let's talk about tight ends. Uh, Dud, go. Uh, Dud? Mm, I think I know who you're going to say. Kyle Rudolph. Okay, did not expect you to say that. Six points. Okay. Uh, stud, Zach Ertz. Oh, yeah. Ertz, for sure. Um, I called that, by the way. Ebron had a great game. I called that, by the way. You did? You did? I called it in your face, doubters. Take on that, haters. There wasn't too many tight ends who really did well other than Ebron and Ertz. The next highest score was Kelsey. Kelsey, I think I'll put as my stud just because... He had a tough matchup, and he still put up numbers. He was a one Chiefs player uh, other than Kareem Hunt. I think that really lived up to the expectation of their numbers this week. Hill didn't have a great game, but he had a good game. Uh, Mahomes definitely did not have the Mahomes game that we have seen in the last couple. So a couple picks makes him human, quote unquote. Yeah, but I'll say Rudolph is my um, is my dud. Do you have a dud? My dud for wait. I have a dud. Vance McDonald. He had that one okay game in in. But he had a good. The Steelers put up a lot of points yesterday, and he didn't get any. Um, he had one point, which it kind of felt like he was going to have some more action. But Antonio Brown, Juju, and Connor really stole the show for the Steelers. Yeah, I would say definitely that. Um, All right. But I would definitely say, um, you know who was a dud? Uh, George Kittle. He had a he had a one good play. He had like what five six points. He actually had ten point eight. He had a he was in the top top seven top six for tight ends. Well, that's bad for tight ends. Then if uh, he's in the top ten for ten points. Yep, it was not a good day for tight ends. He finished above Gronk and Graham. Uh, so, last week, do you remember when we picked our lineups? Yes. Now, if this is if you didn't hear that last episode, please we, watch it. We picked a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, a tight end, and a defense. Uh, just anybody who we wanted. We were tallying up the points. So let's go through it. My quarterback, I picked Ben Roethlisberger. You picked Blake Bortles. Mm-hmm. How do you think, uh, what do you think Bortles got there? If he no, Minus those five interceptions, that's a good day. He had 22.6, not bad. I had Ben, he had 27.6. Now let's move to running back. Okay. You took Gurley. Congratulations. You were rewarded with 31.3 points. I'm tallying up the score. You you following with me here? Yes, I am. Todd Gurley, 31.3. I took Christian McCaffrey, 17.8. Um, wide receiver, do you remember who you took? Um, Hopkins, he did good. 19.6. Nice. I took Antonio Brown, 27.1. Who's your who'd your tight end? Who'd you pick? Uh Ertz, who did well. Twenty four. Yeah. I took Kittle at ten point eight. Do you remember who you took for defense? Tennessee. And they did they had, they did all right. They had ten. That's fine. Yeah. Well I mean that's that's how I took they, Baltimore. They didn't lose any points, so I took Baltimore and I got twelve. 
So with a score of 107.5 points, your winner goes to Jeff Malinov. Oh! In your face, you're talking so much trash mode of yesterday or the on Friday. You got oh, me by so good. you got me by twelve point two. Oh baby, oh mommy, oh daddy, I am a big old baddie. Wait, <laughs> who who got you the most points? Who got? Don't me ever the most sing points? that song again. That was the that's worst. a friend's reference. How dare you, sir? I don't care. Say it again though. What, what were you asking me? Uh, who had the most points on your team? Uh, Ben beat Antonio Brown by point five, but they together definitely showed Who had out. the most points for me? Gurley at 31. Oh, I had Gurley. I forgot about Gurley. Yay! Gur- Gurley and Ertz were your top performers. Hopkins did well. Bortles did well. Kittle didn't do so great for me, uh, but 10.8 is fine. This is a celebration. Not bad, though. If you took the, any of these players, you probably had a good daily fantasy game, because I... You beat me, but my team had 95 points from from five players, so that's not bad yes, at all. There's yeah. high scoring. Um, but let's talk about the buy or sell segment that we did last week. Do you recall? I do recall. Okay. So last week you were saying that you were going to buy Ridley, Bortles, and Devontae Freeman. Yes. If you did buy those players, it did not work out this week. Wait, Sportles, Devontae... Okay, Devontae Freeman wasn't a good guess. No, no, no. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying it for the first week yeah. after we talked about hold, it. Hold on to those guys for now and keep on going. You'll be fine. You wanted to sell Mixon, Deion Lewis, and Julio Jones. Julio Jones did not have a great he game. He had another struggled game. Deion Lewis had a really bad game, and Joe Mixon had a really good game. Are you still buying uh, Calvin Ridley? You're still buying him. Yes, You're not I'm worried. Still buying him. You're not worried. Yes. You're not worried. I'm not worried. So what if Ridley puts up another um, dud this week? Are you worried after that? Give me three weeks. Okay. So for my buy and sell, I was buying the Rams receivers, and <laughs> Cooks didn't do anything, but he got injured early in that game, so he left with a concussion. Um, he wasn't having a good game, obviously, up until that point. But unfortunately, injuries are hard to predict. But we'll see. Uh, Cup had a good game before he left with an injury. Another good game for Cup. Buying Rams receivers. What about Reynolds? Is he a popular ad this week for the Rams? If Cooks and or Cup can't go next week, do you buy into Josh Reynolds or fourth round pick? He saw a lot of action yesterday. You will because you said buy them all. Buy them all. Get your hands on all of them. I say not yet because those guys are going to come back fairly quickly and he's going to see not a lot of playing time after that. So don't buy a guy just for one game. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Um, you d- you do want to be a little bit more patient. So I also had uh, David Johnson as a buy. Do you see how well that worked out? 20 fantasy points. That's good. Yeah. Uh, He's yeah. trending up, too. He has 14, 16, and 20 in his last three. Uh, and then he gets to play Minnesota. That'll be a tough game for him. We'll see if he can keep it up. Um, a player that I said to sell was Calvin Ridley. He seems to be the player that we talk about the most on this buy or sell. Um, yeah, uh, again, we'll see what happens with Ridley. We'll see if his... If the opportunities grow for him, but as of right now, he just needs to get more time on the field or else he cannot. you can't rely on him to be a solid starter. But, you know, we'll see if he actually gets on the field. But Sanu had a good game again for the Falcons, so it doesn't look like his role is changing. It might take some time before Ridley really establishes this number two receiver on that team. Okay, and we're going to take a short break here. Uh, when we get back to you, we're going to do our uh, – once again, we're going to pick up our five guys – Five thirty-five. We're gonna keep doing this. We're gonna keep this momentum going with our little challenge here. We got over. Are we gonna do that for this this uh, weekend already, though, or should we wait till Friday? Oh, we got a point. We should wait till Friday. But uh, let's talk about waiver wire ads and potential drops when we come back. That, that sounds sound like good? a good idea. This is the podcast. We come up with stuff on the fly. It sounds like. So we'll get back <laughs> to you when we get back to you.
Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G- smcpodcast.com for more info. And welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. We've talked about our studs and duds, and we are going to now talk about our waiver wire pickups. Who is your waiver wire pickup? Who's your top priority in the waivers? For this week? Mm Mm-hmm. That is a good question. And I will say that it seems like weeks past there's been more, um, I don't know, some flashier names or maybe some more exciting prospects on the waiver wire than this week. Uh, I would say that my biggest one is probably Deontay Foreman, Houston Texans. He comes off the PUP list, and I don't think Lamar Miller is very good. I think there's a lot of potential there for him to be the number one running back moving forward. Okay, I can definitely see a, a, an argument for him. You got Lamar Miller and Alfred Blue that are the two current running backs right now. I thought Alfred Blue had a decent game last night, but I think that they drafted Deontay Foreman. He's got a lot of upside. He is coming off a pretty bad injury, but um, so it might take him a week or two to get get in the swing of things. But yeah, if you're looking for like a home run, I would say he might be your best bet. Yeah, um, I see him getting picked up by multiple teams in, in, in fantasy football. So I guess you can get him while he's hot, right? Yeah. Other than that, I mean, for running backs, it's usually running back is a position that people look for the most. It's hard to, it's hard to tell. I don't know if Marlon Mack has been dropped, but it might be time to maybe hop on him if he if he hasn't if he's uh, sitting there somewhere. Somebody did drop him because of their frustration with him being injured and whatnot. Um, do you have any other maybe running backs that you would look to target this week? Um, Mike Davis could be a good running back you could look at to give you some numbers. Yeah, absolutely, Mike Davis. Uh, it looks like the Seahawks have been clear the last two weeks. They want to run the football. What do you think about Rashad Penny? He is nowhere to be seen for the first-round running back by Seattle. Yeah, um... First round pick, you usually don't see much of that. Um, usually see some progress, and he has done anything but have progress. Seems like he's just fallen in the depth chart rather than maintain his backup role. Yeah. Been kind of disappointing, no doubt about it. Uh, again, he was a questionable first round pick. He was projected to go second or even third round, so they kind of reached for him, to, and uh, it kind of shows. What about Alfred Morris? If he's available, you should probably pick him up. Brita got injured again. Uh, he, Morris had a respectable he, game. They, they checked the x-rays on Matt Brita. It says the x-rays are negative, so he should be back next week. But, yeah, Alfred Morris did get a lot of carries, obviously, yesterday because of that. So I would I would take a chance. I might take a chance on Alfred Morris, depending on how many carries he gets for next week. Okay. Uh, what he's about, a good flex player, I would say. Who is your quarterback to add this week if you needed a streaming option maybe your starter is a little banged up maybe he's on a bye week who would you look for somebody who's readily available or um, i can let you know who i would pick let me guess bethard no oh he's not a terrible play but no well, who then i would i would play sam darnold this week he gets okay. to play a favorable matchup, Indianapolis Colts. I think it's a game that they should control. 
It is a home game. I think his defense will play well. But I like Sam Darnold. I don't know if he's going to light it up, per se, but I think that he could be a solid 20 points for you this week against the Indianapolis Colts, maybe 200 yards and two touchdowns. That's that's a bold statement right there. You think so? 200 yards, two touchdowns? I don't think it's that bold, but we'll see. Well, who are they playing? Indianapolis. Oh, then yes, that's probably logical. I don't see their running game continuing to do what they did last. He had a respectable game last week, fantasy numbers-wise, and that was with his running backs getting over 300 yards and two touchdowns. So um, maybe they don't run for that many yards and score that many touchdowns this week. Who knows? I mean, it could happen. Do you have a, a quarterback or maybe another position that you're you looking know, I at? You know, I would pick C.J. Beathard, to be honest. He puts up numbers. He may not win games. He got 22 points and uh before and he could um get them consistently in the 20s i could see that because kyle shanahan loves to throw the football yeah yeah so alfred morris i mean if breed is injured or even if morris is on the field half the time you gotta like his upside because of kyle shanahan uh he's a coach that uses multiple running backs so if you're on the field you're going to get the ball Except if you're a lineman, do not pick up a lineman. I don't know if you even can pick up. Can you imagine? Like, I got a question for you. This is actually an important question. If linemen were a pick in the draft, finished draft, what would their points consist of? Offensive linemen. Yeah, because defense lineman counts for defense, so that's that's a different. I don't know, man, but that would. I don't think that people would be running to join those leagues where they can draft offensive linemen. Except for actual offensive linemen. Yeah, the offensive linemen in the NFL can have their own league. I guess you do like pancakes and amount of sacks allowed and stuff like that. Pancakes? I thought this was a fantasy football podcast. That's an actual stat. Oh, I thought thought you were hungry. I'm hungry. I haven't (laughs) eaten breakfast. I'm actually quite hungry and haven't drinking water, which is a serious problem. But I'm oh, more of a waffle guy than a pancake I guy. I am too, but I'm saying a pancake is actually a stat for linemen. Why do people like pancakes so much? Well, okay, stop talking about the actual pancake. I'm talking They're about like the stat pancake. Shut up. I'm talking about the actual stat of pancakes. You stupid. Okay. You know what the stat pancake is, right? I do. Okay. But there Can, should be yeah, one called a, a waffle. That sounds like a sexual thing. No. No, the waffle? That sounds sexual. Yeah, I wasn't going there with that. Yeah, it kind of sounded like you were. I just like... Yeah, let's go. want to go there? We can go there. No. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. Anyways, back to the back to the question at hand. Lyman would be probably the most uh, weird stat book you could possibly have for a fantasy football. Like, what, five points be like your best bet? I'm not sure which is more off topic. Offensive lineman being a stat in fantasy football or pancakes and waffles. But, um, Offensive lineman is a it's, a it's a fantasy football topic. It's a question about fantasy football. You were just with breakfast. And now you're making me more hungry, and that makes me more angry because I know what, when we're done with this, I can't go get some McDonald's breakfast, and I can't go get their hotcakes. Let's give the fans at home some wide receiver ads for their fantasy football week six. Do you have a wide receiver? Pancake. His name is Pancake Waffle. That'd be a great name. Do you have a uh, do you have a wide receiver that might be an interesting name to add that you might take a flyer on? Wait, name the position again. A uh, wide receiver. Take a waiver on. How about yeah, like take a flyer on a waiver wire ad that somebody who might not be a solid player right now maybe had a good game. Maybe they're an interesting name that you're Trent looking Taylor. Out. Okay. He, he he gets a, he's a slot receiver gets the ball every now and again. I mean he can get just some points. He had a touchdown last yesterday. Interesting. Uh, he, he's a big he's a big question mark. I don't say go for him, but he could be. What about Robbie Anderson? He's not he's available in a lot of leagues, and he had a big game yesterday. Two touchdowns on 130 yards receiving. I don't think he's getting that again though. Yeah, but he's a starting wide receiver for an up and coming team or like a. Quarterback. Would you call them up and coming? The Jets, yeah. They look good. Mm, okay, granted, he is a good player. I did, I do like seeing him, and he does, he does uh, get the ball. Uh, but again, um, do you, you, you don't know, make him like I flex player, or maybe your two, three slot receiver, depending on how your fantasy stats go or fantasy football is set up. 
if you have a three wide receiver league, then I absolutely would pick him up. What about Green Bay wide receiver Marquez Valdis Scantling? Um, first of all, long name. Seven uh, for sixty eight and a touchdown yesterday, and there they had injuries. Randall Cobb didn't play. Geronimo Allison was hurt. They had some potential there for Marquez Valdez Scantling to step in and, and be an immediate impact where he was a very popular daily fantasy player yesterday. A lot of people owned a piece of him in daily fantasy. But for season long fantasy, are you season long, if anything, he's gonna stay on my bench until a bye week comes. But would you pick him up? Would you drop somebody on your roster for him? knowing that he might not be better than the fourth receiver on their team, or he, could he supplant Oh, uh, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not dropping someone to pick him up. Could he supplant Geronimo Allison and Randall Cobb, though, and jump ahead and just right behind Devontae Adams for the number two receiver? I don't see him going past Devontae Adams. I think he's, he's submitted sure. his spot on that team. I think at best he could be a slot. Okay. You know, there's always value in an Aaron Rodgers offense uh, for guys like that, for uh, ancillary targets, you could say, like third and fourth receivers, just because those are positions where they get insert inserted into the starting lineup, then they can make an impact. What about a guy who kind of broke out yesterday for the Seattle Seahawks, David Moore, three catches, 38 yards. He had two touchdowns, though. Russell Wilson went to him twice in the red zone. We see Baldwin struggling. They have Tyler Lockett, who looks good. Brandon Marshall is struggling. The only thing I'll put a big question mark on is at 38 yards because he's only looking for him in short passing gains. In in reality, I would like him to go at least like a 20-yard gain for a touchdown, at least attempt to, not just take a five-yard touchdown because that's not going to get you a lot of points. Well, what about... The idea, though, that this might be their new red zone target because they lost Jimmy Graham and he was their red zone guy last year. Baldwin's not he a red zone guy. really did anything, though. Well, Graham had a good season last year in the red zone. He scored a bunch of touchdowns, but they don't have that guy. Baldwin is not that guy. So is there a potential here for, for David Moore to be their red zone wide receiver? I mean, absolutely, but do you, what, do you want to drop someone for him? Depends on my roster, but maybe if I have two quarterbacks and I'm not using one, I might go ahead and take a flyer on David Moore, see if he has another good week. If not, maybe see, just I'm drop See, I'm going to your second quarterback until your first quarterback has a bye week just so you don't lose a quality quarterback due to waivers. And once that bye week is over, then you can drop him because what's he going to do now? Yeah, so he's just, and he's just taking on, a bench after that. Well, depending on your league, there's sometimes there's solid quarterbacks in waivers. Like you, like some leagues right now, Derek Carr, Alex Smith, C.J. Beathard, for example, you can get those guys and start them at you know the snap of a finger. So it just depends what you're looking for. But if you're needing help at wide receiver and you're looking for a home run, he might not be a bad choice to take a flyer on and see if he pans out. You got and a point. You, sorry, here's the young, thing. You got a point there. Here's the thing in fantasy football. If you're if you're using a traditional waiver system, it's better to get ahead of the curve than to see somebody break out. Like for example, the leagues that I have that I had added Calvin Ridley in, I added him before he blew up. I could see that he there was some potential in that offense there, but then everybody's going after him at the same time after those players have a big game. So a guy like David Moore. He might get picked up on waivers right away this week, but if he's not, you might want to take a chance on him to see if he pans out. True, um, but that's totally a. I feel like that's a gamble because losing a backup quarterback, like if you pick them in the draft, that means they're at least a high quality of a player, and giving them up, they're going to be taken up so quickly. Yeah, I'm. I'm just somebody who everyone's looking. I for hardly ever have two quarterbacks in my roster. I normally just have one, even if that one isn't a top guy. Um, but it depends what your makeup is. Um, I usually go with one quarterback and one backup in, till the bye week. I start a quarterback and then I drop him because then um, he's taking up space after that. Because I'm only saving him for the bye week so I can get some quality points in that system, and then I can add another player that I think contribute throughout the rest of the yeah. season. Yeah, and it depends. Some weeks you're going to feel confident. Because I've done that when I had a one quarterback and then I looked for one for uh, 
when I had to had a bye week and there was nobody available. Yeah, it just there, there's sometimes where there's a very lackluster quarterback system. Uh, maybe not this year, but I would just still play it safe. If you have two quarterbacks, I would say stick with them. Still. Give me a tight end that might be a good add in fantasy. Good question. Um, Austin Hooper could be one. I don't know. He's like sometimes uh, he's on some rosters. Yeah, he has a couple receptions. He, has, he hasn't made a He huge had a good game impact. yesterday, though. I think six for 77. It's yeah, but that's like his best game of the season. Do you have a tight end in mind? or? Um, I do, if you don't. No, I really can't think of one at the moment. Uh, let's go Nick Vanette. Tight end, Seattle. Now that Disley's on IR, there's receptions to be had there. He had three yesterday for 40 yards. So maybe you take a fire on him. Maybe you can use him in a bye week type of situation. What about uh, defenses? Um, defenses to stream for week six. Definitely look up... Uh, um. God, well, I I had them in my head and I lost them. Um, Green Bay's defense against no, the Niners. No, no, yeah. no. That would be a good stream. Uh, what about Jets defense against the Colts? Possibly. What about Seattle defense against the Raiders? Um. Mm. I'll give you my favorite one. Okay. Dallas's defense, if they are available, they play Jacksonville this week. We know Bortles can get real loose with the football. We know the Cowboys can rush the passer. There might be some potential there for defensive turnovers, sacks, and of course, if you get pressure on the quarterback and turnovers, there's always a chance to take one to the house. Mm-hmm. Um, I a lot think of upside. One of the main defenses I think I'm looking at right there is um, the Cincinnati Bengals. Do you think they're still up in waivers, or do you think they're... Yeah, because they haven't been very good. Yeah, but their team has been good, and I think with this, they're getting kind of an easy schedule as things progress. But I think they play Pittsburgh this week. They always do well against Pittsburgh, though. So you'd feel confident starting them? Mm. Over the three that I named, Jets against Indy, Seattle against Oakland, Dallas against Jacksonville? I'm not sure. Uh, more than Dallas against Jacksonville. Okay, okay. Cool. So we uh, should probably take a quick break. Yeah. And That's then what I'm about to say. we come back, talk about some notable things in fantasy football, some things to look for. We're on the final stretch at the end of this podcast, and we will see you oh, we'll, very we'll preview soon. the what? fantasy oh. football, Monday Night Football, too, for tonight. Oh, yes, that's what we'll mainly do. And yeah. we will see you when we get back, when we feel like it, which will be soon. Don't worry. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. And welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. We talked about our uh, picks of last last week. See, we got them right. I won. I beat him. And uh, we talked about our waivers and our, our studs and duds. And now we're going to be talking about Monday Night Football between the Saints and the Redskins and talking about who we should pick in our daily fantasy and as well as our regular fantasy routines. So my main stardom for this game between the Redskins and the Saints is Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram. Yeah. 
He's your main one, huh? Because Over he's, he's he just returned. He's got to get the ball a lot, and I think he's got a lot to prove, and he's going to prove this um, suspension is behind him, and he's going to have a, a great day. Okay, okay. So, how about we do a little game? I think this is going to be good. Okay, go for it. Project Mark Ingram's total fantasy points. I don't care about his stats. Give me how many total points he will score. 21,000. No, just 21. 21. Okay. Uh, I You're higher on him than I am. I don't know if he's going to see the field all that much, but I could give him, I'll give him 10 to start. 10 points. Okay. How many carries do you think he'll get? I think he'll get like seven, probably two or three catches. Okay. I think he's going to get a touchdown at least. He could. He could get 10 points and get a touchdown, or he could get 21 points and get a touchdown. We'll see. It should be interesting how they use him. I'm, I'm interested because if you're a Mark Ingram owner, you would be upset if he's not used very much tonight if he takes a clear backseat to kamara because you've had him on your roster for this long you're kind of waiting to to see if you have a potentially top 15 running back Mm -hmm. there's potential there for both running backs to be top 15 fantasy running backs wouldn't you say yeah i definitely would say who are you sitting uh like going into this weekend just this game for the redskins and saints uh probably not too many people to be honest with you this is a game where you want as many redskins and saints players in as possible um go go daily fantasy wise what are you looking at daily fantasy wise are you not picking man <sighs> i don't know jameson crowder um, i just don't like his upside all that much okay Fair enough. Um, like, if I'm playing daily fantasy, I'm looking for big games, right? So People are saying, like, Adrian Peterson, this is a revenge game, but I don't see it. I'm, I'm benching him. Yeah. Because he just gets Chris, too many Chris carries. Thompson is a, is a force in that backfield. He does get a lot of receptions, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a good point you bring up about the duo between. That's another good duo. You know, we talk about the focus is Ingram Kamara. But this year so far, Thompson and Peterson have maybe have they been the best one two combo in the NFL? Peterson has had two games was he scored over twenty two fantasy points. Is there a better one two combo in fantasy football right now than Peterson and Thompson? Well, Ingram and Kamara are gonna have Could a to say about that. What about James White and Sony Michelle? They both have been doing really well. Michelle is doing way better than White is. James White's a top ten fantasy running back as of today. Well, receiving wise, well, yeah, but points are points. It doesn't matter how you do. He could throw the he could throw the ball, and then you still get points for it, right? Okay, granted, but I would still put um, yeah, uh, I would still I would still put Melvin Ingram, Melvin Ingram. What am I saying? Mark Ingram, Melvin. Ingram. Who's Melvin Ingram? Oh, linebacker on the Chargers. Okay, that's okay. I was like, what? I've heard this name before. Who is Melvin? Ingram? Okay, thank you. Um, but Mark Ingram and Kamara are like last year they both rushed for over a thousand yards, and that's a very in, that's a very good stat line to have. And with Mark Ingram back at hundred percent healthy and Kamara at his best right now, maybe the best in the league. It's hard to say that these two aren't the best, and it's gonna prove. And we're gonna prove if it's the best or not this month tonight. If you're playing daily fantasy, are you taking Alex Smith or Drew Brees? Knowing that Yona can choose players from this game. Drew Smith. Uh, <laughs> um, Alex Brees. No. It's um, a good question. Uh, who do you think will run the ball more? Uh, Washington or New Orleans? Yeah, probably the Redskins. So I'll go Drew Brees at passing. I'll just I'll just take all Saints guys. <laughs> yeah. What about Michael Thomas? Do you see a huge game for him tonight? If they pass the ball often, more often than they run the ball, then yes. But since Ingram is back, they might run the ball a lot more. You think so? I don't know if they'll change their ways for Mark Ingram because they have Kamara and Thomas. Like they wouldn't want to get away from what's been working for them, right? Uh. I guess it depends on the situation. They might want to throw the other team off, and they've been studying tapes on how much they've been passing the ball and maybe do some running and then do play action to get uh, Thomas open. 
I have a um, an interesting question for you that relates to my fantasy team, and I want to get your opinion for the listeners. Are you uh, ready for I'm it? I'm listening. So I am currently in a matchup where I am winning by 61 points, okay? Are you ready? Yes. Because it's about to get wild in here. I'm winning by 61. These are the players that my opponent has left. Chris Thompson, Mark Ingram, Michael Thomas, New Orleans defense and special team. You're screwed. Yeah? You're screwed. I think I'm going to win, but it's going to be close. You're screwed. You think so? You're, oh, yeah. Are you being honest? I'm completely honest with you. Like Chris Thompson, to bet, Mark Ingram, and on. the New Orleans defense, and Michael Thomas, it's over. You're willing to bet 20 push-ups on Friday on this? Make it 10. You're willing to bet 10 push-ups? Yeah, let's do it. They, my opponent needs 61 points from Ingram, Thompson, Thomas, and from New Orleans. From four defense. different players, yes. Yeah, so he needs an average of 15. Yeah, they'll. Oh, three of them will get 15. Yeah, but if the fourth one doesn't, then I win. <laughs> so no, oh, four, he needs an average. No, I'm two. saying one will get fi- three will get 15, one will get more than 15. But are you worried about New Orleans defense here? Because they can get him nothing, or they can get have him. A they, bad that's game. guaranteed 10 points right off the bat. That's not guaranteed 10 points. 10 points is really good for fantasy. Defense. No, I'm at 10 points at the start of the game. Sure, but it goes down. Yeah, okay, granted. But four my, with three of the best players going right now on uh, in both on both teams, you're at, they're both get they're two of them are gonna get over twenty points. <laughs> my favorite part is Michael that. either Michael Thomas or Mark Mark Ingram are gonna get over twenty five points. Mm, I would be shocked if Mark Ingram got over twenty five. Well you have to points. do ten push ups tomorrow. I will bet you ten push ups. So if I lose, I lose my fantasy matchup and I have to do ten push ups. That yeah. sucks. And I, it's not really that bad of a bet because we both gain muscle from the losing the bet. <laughs> so I have another question for you that relates to my fantasy team in a different league. Shoot. I need thirty one points and I have Michael Thomas and Will Lutz. The kicker and Michael Thomas. Do Will I Lutz win? has not been doing very Isn't well. Isn't it funny though. that I need Michael Thomas to have a good game in one, but I need him to not have a great game? Yeah, in you can win both ways. <laughs> which one which one oh, pays I can. more? Which I actually one? can win both of these for sure. I should win both of okay, these. Okay. Um I say the one with sixty one points is more in danger of losing. You think I'm because there's more players that my yeah. opponent has, and they're all key players in both offenses. But if Will Lutz, they're has... both key players in both offenses, and then you have the defense who if can also Will... do what well, we need to get the defense. Also, the special teams. So I'm hoping for Michael Thomas have a great game, but Mark Ingram and Chris Thompson have terrible games tonight. And I think if that happens, I will win both, and I will be happy. And you will do push-ups. And it's only ten will... push-ups, first of all. And can you do ten in a row. Yes. All right. We'll see. Why do you do that? Why do you doubt me? We'll I work out Friday. every day. <laughs> Anyways, we're done, we're done for here. The day. Yeah, we're done. When we get back, we'll see who does the ten push-ups. Uh, we'll Friday. have to, actually we'll have to f- see that Friday, huh? Because we don't have the fantasy football podcast until Friday. Friday, we'll talk about it, and yeah. we'll talk. We'll see. And we'll see who won the bet. We'll also talk about it during the sports broadcast, probably. But uh, again, we will see you on Friday for the Fantasy Football Podcast. And then if you want to check out our other podcast, check out the Sports Podcast every day and the Football Podcast, which is four times a day, four times a week, I mean. I uh, should be. Let me check my schedule here. What are you my talking about? Paper. Football or are you talking about? I'm talking about football. Football's football four is four days, days a week. week. Sports is five days a week. And then uh, Fantasy Football will be back on Friday. But if you want to check us out before then, there you go. Sports and football are also available. But until then, we will see you next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program